In this video, we will use the landscape and wildlife population model called ALSIS that we set up for a Yukon study area in video 3 to explore and understand the basis for developing some harvest management strategies. We will use the model to identify some of the key issues that may influence sustainable hunting strategies for moose. The first question we'll explore is how might environmental and habitat variability affect harvest management strategies? The second question is what effects does harvesting males versus females have on a population? Before we dive into the model results, it's important to remind you about two points. Firstly, the work presented here is for illustrative purposes and to show how models can be useful learning tools. The modeling work was done to illustrate some important considerations about wildlife harvesting strategies, and as such, the model results are not intended to be used as specific harvest recommendations. Secondly, the model input values for survival and reproduction have been approximated from the general scientific literature, so actual values for specific populations may be different. If we were going to use this model for management discussions, local experts and biologists would determine if these values are realistic and plausible. The model runs we will review are based on two important factors that may affect moose harvesting strategies. One, whether the environment and landscape, including the habitat, are highly variable or constant. And two, whether the harvest selects males versus females. To appreciate the relative effects that environmental variability and sex ratio of the harvest may have on sustainable harvesting strategies, we will review six scenarios or six separate combinations of the two factors as summarized in this table. Before we begin, let's quickly review the format of the graphs that we will be looking at. Time is shown along the bottom of the graph, or x-axis. For the simulation period, the model started at time zero and ran for 100 years. Along the vertical, or y-axis, the graphs will show you the population size. It is also important to take note of the scale of the vertical axis to inform you about the relative change of population size over time. Another important point to understand about the model simulations is that if a population is harvested, it starts at year 50 and harvesting continues to the end of the simulation time. For the two no harvest scenarios, we will review graphs showing the basic population dynamics or trends over time when the environment and landscape are constant and when the environment and landscape are variable. This graph shows that the moose population grows to about 1,500 animals by around 30 years and then moose numbers remain fairly constant for the rest of the simulation period. Because the environment was held constant and there is no harvesting, the trends for each of the 12 runs were virtually identical. The graph under a variable environment shows a similar growth rate of the moose population in the first 30 years, but the biggest difference compared to the constant environment scenario is that the moose population mostly ranges between 1,000 and 1,400 individuals and is on average approximately 1,200 animals over the simulation period. The green band shows the range of natural variability for the many times the model was run. You can see that even with no harvest in a variable environment, the numbers of animals may sometimes drop below the desired levels. For the two bull harvest scenarios, we will review graphs showing the basic population trends over time when the environment is constant and variable. This comparative graph, under a constant environment, show five simulation runs where the only difference is the level of bull harvesting, which only occurs after year 50. Run number one, the dark blue line, has no harvest. The red line has a bull harvest that is set at 1% of all adults. The purple line has a harvest of 3% of all adults. The green line has harvest set at 5%, while the orange line has the bull harvest set at 7% of all adults. The population graph shows that all five runs have a similar growth rate and long-term population size compared to the first scenario when there was no harvest and a constant environment. The population graph under a variable environment shows all five runs have a very similar growth rate and long-term population size that varies between 1,000 and 1,400 moose and remains mostly within the natural range of variability, the green band, that we would expect if there was no harvesting. 
A visual comparison of the colored line suggests that the population is resilient to the bull harvesting rates which ranged from 0 to 7 percent. Next, we will review graphs showing the basic population trends over time for the cow harvest scenarios when the environment is constant and variable. This comparative graph shows a very different picture than the ones we saw for bull harvesting. Let's just remind ourselves that the five simulation runs are identical except for the fact that we changed the level of female harvesting. The different colored lines represent the different harvest rates, with the dark blue line representing no harvest through to the red, purple, green, and orange lines, which represent cow harvests of 1%, 3%, 5%, and 7% of all adults. The blue line in the population graph is based on a zero cow harvest and is therefore a useful baseline for comparison. The population graph shows that as we increase the number of cows harvested from 1% to 7% of the total number of adults, then the total population size also decreases. At the end of the simulation run, a 7% rate of cow harvest has reduced the population size from around 1,500 to approximately 550 animals, which is less than 40% of the original population size. This graph shows how the population responds when cows are harvested starting at year 50 and the environment is variable. Generally, what you see is that the addition of environmental variation causes the population to fluctuate over time which in turn makes the population more sensitive to cow harvesting. The population graph shows similar trends to the scenario when cows were harvested in a constant environment, but the population is more variable in the runs and is not able to rebound as quickly from harvesting. The blue line in the population graph represents no cow harvest and is a good baseline for comparison of the other runs. The population graph shows that as we increase the proportion of cows harvested, from 1% through to 7% of the total number of adults, then total population size decreases accordingly. And at the end of the simulation run, a 7% rate of cow harvest has reduced the population size from an average of 1,200 animals to just under 500, which is approximately 40% of the initial population size. Thank you for watching. That concludes the first part of video four. Please view video 4.2 where we will summarize the key lessons from these harvesting scenarios.